The path of wildness, it's easy to find. It's the course of a stream, leaves blown in the wind, a beast's track through the brush, and the direction of our first inclination. The path of wildness is, in fact, the very origin bit of idea from which my whole book, Going Alone, did spring. I came up with this particular idea as a deliberation and answer to what to do when we can't quite make a decision about what to do, particularly relative to how we want to live our lives. An important juncture and crossroads in our days is arrived at, and should we stay the course or choose an alternate path or something completely different? Which option to pick? Well, the, the process is to do three things. First, to collect the facts. It's two, to weigh the facts, to consider them, talk them over with others, to even maybe write them out, make a measure of the pros and the cons and the assumptions relative to each, the risks also. And then make an informed, reason, rational judgment. I choose plan B for the following reasons. Now, <clears throat> if we can't make an relatively easy conclusion about what to do, then assign a date with some more time to deliberate. And then when that date is reached, make a decision. If we still can't do that, then give yourself a little more time and then make a decision. But watch out that this process doesn't unfold into weeks and months and years as it can and that our whole life is spent in deliberation. But if we get to the point that we just can't seem to reasonably make a decision, then that's when we step boldly upon the path of wildness, which is, as I said, the direction of our first inclination. It's like the way that a, an, an animal steps through the forest. It doesn't necessarily think about its, where it's headed, I don't think, but as much as feels its way through, sensing, taking in all the sensations of, that are happening around it from all of its various senses, and then making a deliberation as informed of instinct as a thinking consideration, or maybe even more so. Likewise, the path of wildness is the deliberate choice that we make to follow the course that our inner daemon does suggest. Maybe we should go to the right. That's where our gut is telling us to go. Now, we have to keep in mind that gut feelings can be quite wrong. Taking a, a juncture at the right could lead us to the edge of a cliff, but it might also lead us to safety. In fact, this whole idea came as I originally, originally, way back when I did have that very choice about I had climbed a mountain in the desert and had wandered about at the ridge line, and there were multiple canyons going down and I had to pick a canyon in the spirit of Thoreau I decided I was alone of course and I had to decide which canyon to, in the spirit of Thoreau I decided I would result, take a canyon back that I hadn't taken up which was not a good idea um, and light, light was falling it was going to be a cold night I didn't have a flashlight or anything to sleep in and I just chose I chose I had to pick which canyon the one I had to come up with over here I had a couple of canyons here and I just looked at them. I didn't know. I had no idea. There was no way to assess what was down in those canyons. I didn't know whether I would run across, uh, have a clear path all the way to the bottom, and my car was way out in the desert out there, or if I would run across a dry waterfall and be unable to proceed. Stupid. It was really dumb of me to take that risk just because I didn't know. And I felt that I felt that I felt that I'd, my gut said, this one right here. And I took that, and it turned out to be a good choice. And I made it all the way down and back to my car in time. But if I had in indeed encountered a dry uh, waterfall that I could not scramble down halfway down, I would have been in for a long night of uh, retracing my steps and making my way in the dark through a rattlesnake-infested uh, desert with, li with limited water, no food, and uh, no flashlight, and uh, no idea where the car was. It was a really big risk that I took. That's was my first time to consciously step upon the path of wildness, although I had not yet formulated the idea into my head. The poem that I recited, that I'll recite now again, came to mind as I was thinking these thoughts through in, in Japan, hiking down from the, the very important area that I call the area of the White Whale Waterfall um, in the mountains above Shizuoka, above the, a village called Hirayama. 
And I was coming down the mountain thinking about uh, a letter I'd received from a young man who wanted to come to Japan, but couldn't decide to do it. There was just too many conflicting things, just couldn't figure it out, and as a result was stuck like in the mud. His feet were buried deep in the mud. And I was thinking about his situation, and suddenly the following words just kind of sprang to mind, as they do. The path of wildness, it's easy to find. The course of a stream, leaves blown in the wind, a beast's track through the brush, and the direction of our first inclination. I stopped and wrote it down. That was the nucleus, the very start of what would eventually become the Path of Wildness, and uh, the going uh, Path of Wildness essay, and then the Going Alone book later. That idea has been with me ever since, and I hearken back to it and use it whenever I'm in a position of not being sure which way to proceed and need help finding the way.